What's going on guys, John Elder here from CodeV.com and in this video, we're going to work on some of the secondary buttons for our calculator with Kivi and Python. Alright guys, like I said in this video, we're going to look at some of the secondary buttons for our calculator. But before we get started, if you like this video and want to see more like it, be sure to smash the like button below, subscribe to the channel, give me a thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm, and check out CodingMe.com where I have dozens of courses with hundreds of videos that teach you to code. Use coupon code YouTube1 to get $30 off membership that's all my courses, videos, and books for one time fee at just $49, which is insanely cheap. Okay, in the last video we worked on the plus sign, in this video I want to work on some of these secondary buttons. So. Uh, I've put a little back button here. That's new. We'll talk about it. We want to work on the decimal thing here, plus minus, and I think that should probably do for this video. So here, you see, we got this back button. So I've got 35, 33. If we want to get rid of like the three here, we can hit this. Boom! It it takes off whatever is the last thing on your thing. So that's kind of cool. And then we've got this uh, decimal button here, so we can do that. We can make this plus or minus like this. We could toggle this on and off, and that's how we do that. So uh, let's head over to our Sublime Text Editor. I'm using the Sublime Text Editor and the Git Bash Terminal, as always. I've got the same file from the last video. If you didn't see that video, I uh, checked the link in the comment section below for a link to the playlist. So we've got calc.py and calc.kv. Now, one thing I want to do really quickly before we get going, in the last video, we created functions for each of the add, subtract, multiply, and divide buttons. And even as I was doing this in the back of my head, I was like, wow, this is terrible. We do not need four different functions for this. We could just make this into one function. So I'm going to do that really quickly and just sort of tweak this because it's been bothering me. So instead of calling this add, I'm going to call this math underscore sign. And we want to pass in self and let's also pass in the sign. So here, when we change the output to have the plus minus divide or multiply sign in the text box, Instead of doing that, we could just pass in the sign, right? Now, so instead of all of our different functions calling add, subtract, multiply, or divide, they can just now pat, they can just now call math sign and then pass in the sign that we want to use. So let's go ahead and get rid of our subtract guy and get rid of our multiply and also get rid of our divide. So that cleans things up considerably. And that was super easy. So I'm going to go ahead and copy this. Let's head back over here. And now we need to find each of those signs. So here's the divide. So instead of root.divide, we want to call root.math sign. And here we just want to pass in the divide sign, right? So this will now become sign. And then we'll output that onto the text box, right? So piece of cake. So, okay, that's divide. Let's come through here and find here's multiply. So change that to math sign. And let's pass in the little star symbol. And we can come down here and let's see. Here's subtract. And again, we can pass in the little subtract sign. Is that all of them? I think it might be all of them. Oh, no, back to add. And we pass in the, the addition sign. So now that's all of it. Okay, so let's go ahead and save this and run it just to make sure that worked. So let's go python calc.py. All right, so we can say any number, boom, divided by, we can go again, multiply by, that seems to work, minus whatever, that works, and plus whatever, that works. Okay, so simple fix and pretty easy. So now let's add in the decimal. So when we hit the little dot, we want to make a decimal number. So let's come down here and let's create decimal function. And so let's define this. I'm going to call this dot because, you know, it's a dot. <laughs> you don't want to call it decimal because Python has a decimal function built into it already. So you can conflict. So instead, I'm going to call it dot. Now we can grab whatever was previously in our text box. We know how to do that because we've done this many times. So just copy this. Now I'm going to set this to a variable and we've been calling this prior. So I'm just going to call it prior again. So prior equals. So this is going to put whatever's currently in our text box into this variable, right? Now we could just go uh, prior equals, and let's just do an F string real quick and pop in prior again, and then put a period after it, right? Now we can just output this back onto the screen as prior. We could probably do this in less lines of code. We could do it on one long line of code, but I like to break things apart and be very explicit. 
So here, let's comment, uh, add a period or a decimal to the end of the text, right? And then we can output back to the text box. All right, so that's pretty simple. Now we just need to pass this into our Kiwi file here. So let's, um, oh, here it is right there. Here's our period. So we can give this an on underscore press and we can call root dot dot. <laughs> and we don't have to pass anything because we're not passing anything in here. Uh, so that should work. So let's go ahead and save this and run it to make sure that worked. So we can go 89.32, whatever. Okay. Now we might want to in the future add some more functionality to this because if I press it again, it's going to do it again. And we can, we can tinker with this. Actually, we could probably just do that right now. Let's go back here really quickly. And in this dot function, well, let's, let's do this. Now let's go if dot in prior, uh, we could just say pass, right? Else we want to do all of this, right? So let's go ahead and save this and run it. it should work, I think. So let's go 89.325. Oh, doesn't do anything because we've already got a dot. And we can keep going. And that's pretty good. Okay, so that was easy. So we've got the dot. And it works for zero too, so that's cool. Uh, let's see, what else? This CE button. I don't really know what CE is. I know C is clear. Instead of CE, I want to put a little arrow here that will get rid of the last thing. That's a common thing in calculators. We pull up the Windows calculator. You can see right here, there's this right here. Uh, three, if we want to do boom, it knocks off the last thing and it keeps knocking off the last thing. So let's go ahead and do that. And I might switch these two buttons around. I want the C to be here and the arrow thing to be here. So we'll do that real quick. So let's head over to our Kiwi file and I'm just going to come up to the top. And instead of this being CE, I'm going to change this to C. And we can just slap in this guy right here, All right? That should work. And then for here, instead of this C, we can use the, we can, I don't know, I could just put something like that, a little cheesy arrow, or we could do something like that. There's an actual, a little double arrow Unicode symbol that we can use, it's cool. And to use that, we just hit a U there. And then inside of here, we put a backslash and it's just U, uh, zero, zero, a, B. And this is the number zero, not the letter zero, not the letter O, right? So, okay, that will do that. And let's just save this and run it to make sure that looks right. And you see, we have this now little uh, double arrow thing, and that's kind of cool. We've moved the C over and it still works there. Okay, so now we need to make that arrow do something. So instead of calling root.clear, let's call root.remove. And we don't have a remove function yet, but we'll go ahead and make that now. So save that file, head back over here. And just anywhere in here, let's create function to remove last character in text box. And we define this as remove. And this is going to pass in self. And like everything else, we need to get what's currently in the text box. So I could just copy that from there. So now prior is what's currently in the text box, right? Now to remove the last thing, we could just do a little Python here. We could set prior equal to prior. And then we can use this little sort of search and destroy thing here. It says, you know, grab the last thing, negative one, and remove it basically. And then we can just take this and set that equal to prior. And that's all there is to it. So here, let's say, uh, remove the last item in the text box. And here, let's go output back to the text box. Okay, give us some space here. I like space. All right, so let's go ahead and save this and run it, see if that worked. All of these things are really sort of basic things, but you know, they're fun to knock out. So 9653, boom, gets rid of the three, five, six, and nine, and we're back to zero. And that's cool. Boom, we can do that. Okay, so we've got the back, we've got this, we've got our decimal, 
Now let's do, let's finish this video up with the plus minus. So we might wanna make this a negative number, or if it is a negative number, we might wanna make it a positive number. We can do that with this button. So now there are lots of ways to make a number positive or negative with Python, but I don't want you to think of it like that. I don't want you to think of this as a number right now, because when we have things in the text box, by default, it's a string. It's not an integer or a decimal or a float. Uh, it's just a string. So we can search that string for a minus sign. If we see the minus sign, we can just say, hey, remove the minus sign. If there's not a minus sign, we can say, hey, add a minus sign. Don't think of it as an actual minus sign. Just think of it as a dash and a string, basically. It makes it a lot easier. So let's, let's see, let's head down to the bottom, I think. Uh, yeah, here it is right here, plus minus. And let's go on underscore press and let's go root dot, let's call this, I don't know, positive underscore neg, pause neg, right? So, okay, we can do that. Save this, head back over here, and just anywhere in here, let's create function to make text box positive or negative. So let's define pause neg, and we wanna pass in self. And just like everything else we've done, we want to determine what's currently in the text box. So we could set that there. So now let's test to see if there's a subtraction sign already. All right? So give some space here. So we can go if there is that in a prior. So we're saying, hey, if there is already a negative sign in prior, what do we want to do? Well, we probably want to re remove it. So let's do this all in one line. Let's just grab this and set that equal to, and let's create an F string and let's pass in prior. But what do we want to do? Well, we want to dot replace something in prior. What do we want to replace? Well, we can replace the negative sign with nothing. So the replace function will take your variable in this case, a string, it will replace this first thing here is the thing you want to replace. This is the thing you want to replace it with. So we if we wanted to replace this with um, a positive sign, we would put a positive sign there. If we wanted to replace it with the word elder, we would put elder there. I don't want to replace it with anything. So I'm just putting just an empty, just two quotation marks. So, okay, that should work for that. Else, let's just grab this whole thing and paste it in here. But instead of that, we want to put a negative sign on there. So I'm just gonna do an F string, slap in our subtract symbol, and then output back prior. Because think about this, work this through. If our string, if our text box already contains this, we wanna turn it positive. If it doesn't contain this, it means we want to make it negative, right? If it's already positive and we've clicked the button, that means we wanna make it negative. So we just make it negative. And here, we're not actually making it negative in a numerical way. We're just adding a subtraction sign to the string that already exists, right? So this is not a math function here. This is not a math thing. This is, we're just adding a thing to a string. So think of it like that. So, okay, let's go ahead and save this and run it to make sure that worked. So we can go like 56, boom, that's positive. We click it again, it's negative. We can do this after the fact. We can go five plus three. That equals eight. Now we can change that, right? So let's play around with this. Let's go three negative plus five. So a negative three plus five, that should equal two. And it does. Okay, that seems to work. Uh, what else can we do? Let's play around with this dot thing here. So we can go 3.5, let's say plus one. So 3.5 plus one, that should be 4.5. We hit equal, uh-oh, we get an error. Why? because we did everything with integers in the math function or in the addition function. So let's come through here and find our equals function. And here's the stuff we did with math yesterday. So I'm going to change this from zero to 0, 0.0. This will automatically turn this into a float, a decimal number. And then same thing down here, while we're adding this stuff back together, you can't really add a, well, I guess maybe you can, but for good measure, let's change this to a float as well. And a float is Python for decimal. All right, so okay, let's go ahead and save this. This will allow us to now work with decimals.
And maybe we should have done that yesterday, but we weren't that far along yet to deal with decimals. So we didn't have to, but now that we are, we can. So let's go 3.5 and let's go plus one. So now the answer should be 4.5 and it is. So very cool. One thing to note now from now on, everything's gonna be a decimal. So we can go six plus four. This will now equal 10.0, right? And maybe we can tweak this to uh, determine whether or not we want to return a float or not. Well, maybe we'll talk about that later. But for now, we're, we're keeping it simple and we're just building out the basic functionality for this thing. And so we're good to go. Here we can make that negative or positive. We can get rid of it like that if we want. That's kind of cool. And we're coming right along. So not a whole lot of uh, very complicated things in this video, but you know, things we needed to do. And uh, we're starting to get this thing done, it's starting to come together. I guess in the next video, we'll probably look at these other math functions, division, multiplication, and subtraction. Um, but for now, we are uh, doing pretty good. So that's all for this video. If you'd like to be sure to smash the like button below, subscribe to the channel, give me a thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm, and check out codemy.com where you can use coupon code YouTube1 to get $30 on membership. Save pages $49 to access all my courses, over 47 courses, hundreds of videos, and the PDFs of all my best selling coding books. I'm doing over 100,000 students learning to code just like you. My name is John Elder from codemy.com, and I'll see you in the next video.